Hello everyone. We are reviewing the Coriolis effect and its impact on air currents in the upper atmosphere. And today we are going to use a balloon model, which I have below me. But let's, before we get into that balloon model, let's review the Coriolis effect very briefly. The Coriolis effect is an apparent force rather than a true force, and it acts on accelerating systems. In physics, an accelerating system is a system that changes speed or changes direction or both constantly. In this case, the system that we're talking about is the atmospheric system of air currents above the earth. And this also applies to ocean currents as well. To review the Coriolis effect, you may know, acts to deflect air currents in the northern hemisphere to the right of their intended target. And in the southern hemisphere, the Coriolis effect acts to deflect currents to the left of the intended targets. Sometimes that's much easier to demonstrate with a model. So let's describe our model. I tried to find a round balloon. It wasn't easy. So this is the balloon that I have, and we're going to make it into a model of the Earth. And the model that we have here has an equator, which is pretty easy to see, and it has a North Pole. And it doesn't really matter that it's not too round up there. That's my North Pole, and here's my South Pole. And I also put two cities on here. I put New York City, and I put LA. And I put those cities because I wanted to talk about the direction of the rotation of the Earth, which may or may not be apparent to you. But what is apparent to you and what you do know is that the sun rises in New York City before it rises in LA. And so if this is our sun, then we can use that to emphasize that the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction when we are looking at it from the North Pole south. So let's take a look at it. If I say, that the sun rises in New York City first. Here's my light, see? New York City gets the sunlight first, then LA gets the sunlight. And New York City gets the sunlight, and LA gets the sunlight. And I'm turning, as you can see by the top of the balloon, I'm turning in a counterclockwise direction. When I look from the North Pole south, I am seeing a counterclockwise direction. This camera is actually looking down, so it helps us with that. However, if I was looking from the South Pole up toward the equator, what direction would the Earth appear to be spinning? Would it be appear to be spinning counterclockwise or would it appear to be spinning clockwise? Let's check it out. I'm going to take this and continue spinning it. And when I go down to the South Pole, I see that in the same direction, I am actually turning this in a clockwise direction as it appears from the South Pole. So if we are looking from the South Pole to the equator, it seems that we're going in a clockwise direction. And if we are looking from the North Pole towards the equator, it appears that we are turning in a counterclockwise direction. That's important when we think about the Coriolis effect. So now we're gonna look at our demo and our challenge is this. We want to send a paper airplane from the North Pole to the equator. We're going to launch it off and we want to send it straight from the North Pole to the equator. Is that possible if the, if the uh, paper airplane goes at a very high height up into the stratosphere? Is it possible to send it straight through, through there? Well, the Coriolis effect would say no, that it's not possible to do that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use a black magic marker when we are looking at sending a paper airplane from the North Pole straight down to the equator, we're using black for the North Pole because black is like night. So we'll know what black is for our line. And then we are going to send a paper airplane straight from the South Pole to our equator, and try anyway, while the Earth is rotating in that direction, the same direction that we were talking about, and we are going to see if there's a deflection is there. And we're going to use silver for this because it's from the South Pole. So we'll take a look at both lines and see about the deflection there. 
But what we're also going to do is we're going to use this Lazy Susan that I have. It makes a sound. It's going to be a little disturbing, but it's going to help us a bit with the with the um, direction. And we're going to move that in a counterclockwise fashion as though I am looking at it from the North Pole looking down. All right. So let's give it a try and see how it goes. I am going to wind this in a counterclockwise direction from the top. I'm going to have this on the um, Lazy Susan from the bottom. We're going to do our best to try to keep this in a continual motion. It's not easy to do. And then I'm going to draw that straight line like that paper airplane going from the North Pole to the equator. Let's see how we go. Ah, ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to make sure that I've got my nice handy dandy marker working. And I'm going to keep it going and give it a whirl. All right. Look at that. I've got a deflection, which I'm going to show you in a second. And I am deflecting, if I look at this, if I look from the North Pole down, I am deflecting to the right. I'm deflecting to the right. And if I take my handy dandy silver for the South Pole and I get this going, not easy to do, my friends, not easy to do. I will get this moving and work from the South Pole and try to fly that paper airplane directly up to the equator. Let's give it a shot. All right, and I don't know that it really even worked there. Hold on, let me make sure my silver is working. My silver is working. Let's give it another try. In the South Pole, get it going. Okay, and look at that. Ha ha ha. I think you can see that there. That deflection went off to the left from the South Pole up to the equator. And from the North Pole, looking from the North Pole and looking down to the equator, that deflection went off to the right. Let me show you. There's the deflection to the right in the northern hemisphere. There's the deflection to the left in the, in the southern hemisphere. When you are looking from the South Pole, it looks to be to the left. I hope this helps you to understand the Coriolis effect and how it moves currents, especially the currents from the poles. You can also think about this in moving from the equator to the South Pole or from the equator to the North Pole and the deflections there. It is harder to use the model for this because you just don't have enough room. So we try to use the, um, the end extremes of the model, the Northern extreme and the Southern extreme to show our deflection to the right in the Northern hemisphere and our deflection to the left in the Southern hemisphere. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.